Hey guys, it's Silver, and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. Uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot's happened. I've kind of just the, let the years go flying by, and I haven't really paid attention to when this is in the game. It's actually 1882 at this point. We are 20 years after the Transcontinental Railroad being finished. About 30 years after the American Civil War. And, um, yeah, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of stuff that happened in the American history um, that, that this game just does not touch on. It just does not touch on it. When you go through the years, it just goes, the years just keep ticking, the years keep ticking, the years keep ticking. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just don't focus on it. It's good. So, as you may have noticed, we're gaining money. We're gaining large amounts of money fast. So the goal of this episode is actually to kind of start paying down all those freaking loans that I took out. Get this down to something manageable, maybe two million, three million if I can. And the main goal is to see about increasing it. So what I'm thinking of doing is double tracking this side of the curve here, as well as up to the first points here. And essentially, we're going to try and start working all the way back to there to double track this entire area and have a second grain train bringing stuff over as we slowly start making our uh, food train longer. Also, maybe start don't maybe maybe okay maybe before doing that we double track this area so these trains don't constantly have to wait for each other <laughs> that'd be kind of nice um maybe double track this area here first actually that that's probably a smarter idea that way our food train can get here fast um without waiting for the passenger train and also it's the start of our project to double track the passenger line and double track the freight line after that, our next goal is to head over here to the bridge that crosses the river. I don't look to have a ton of bridges going back and forth across the river. That's not how it is in real life, and that's not... That takes up a lot of space, even in games. So having just one bridge over here that we're just going to continuously expand, I am totally okay with. I do a few new additions that we will be kind of maybe playing with. I, I'm looking at a few mods that add new bridges that were over on a different transport fever site. And, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get the bridge to look as close to how I know bridges on the Ohio River looking as for this type of uh, Appalachian area. Not whatever they say in Fallout 76. It's the Appalachian Mountain Range. I don't know why they got it so wrong. Anyway, this is the wrong game to complain about that. So, where to start first? Uh, we have 49,000, so probably nowhere, actually. We probably should wait for something to arrive somewhere and make us money. Because right now, we're not making a lot of money. Uh, good news is, we have a passenger train that is, I think, full. Let's double check this. No, mostly full, but not fully full. About to head past the switch here, and then we have a grain train here ready to go over there. Ooh, it's getting a bit old. It's not how I would have expected the paint to start rusting, but uh, I'll take it. And over here we have our other passenger, our one passenger car train. Which is another project I'd like to try and fix up, is either update the locomotives or the passenger cars on these to maybe make them faster if possible. And look into the possibility of getting our passenger service moving faster, moving more people, and going back and forth uh, with a greater comfort and greater uh, capability. Because I think nowadays, at this station, yeah, we have 37 people here waiting for the next train. I think that's going to take up, uh, I think our other train here can only hold like... 28. 28. And this one here can haul 14. We've almost got enough to fill both of these trains up. Right now, our main goal 
needs to be figuring out a way to maximize profit. So I'm just going to step away for a second. Not step away for a second. That's just sounds, that sounds very different than what I mean. I'm going to put you into some very lovely videos of the world rolling by. Uh, some trial and train shots, some lovely just shots in general. You know, these are very lovely, peaceful moments for you. And <laughs> I said it's so weird. And essentially we'll come back and I'll have done some progress and we can discuss it. I know there was like the idea of maybe doing time lapses and stuff. That's, you know, I like these shots more. I think they're more interesting. They're more dynamic and they kind of let me work, show off the game a bit in a very gorgeous way. And then we can then focus on everything else afterwards. So, yeah, that works. Right, right. Uh, I swear. All right, guys. See you in a few seconds. Hopefully I maybe I can get one of these uh, double lines finished. So not much time's passed. Um, it's only 80, it's only April. I don't remember when I left you guys. Um, I've gone ahead and I double tracked the entire passenger portion here. So it actually is double tracked all the way up into the Y, and then I went ahead and double tracked this portion here. Um, I have not double tracked any more of the main line here. What I have done is I noticed that the train was about three cars short of the grain train taking up that entire siding on the, si the side going back. So I went ahead and I got two more cars. So it's now up to 12 cars for this one train. The only issue that I'm seeing is its speed is definitely getting decreased. So I'm trying to decide if, when I get the money again, if I want to buy a new locomotive and throw this locomotive into the shed to pull the next grain train so we at least have a locomotive there or if I want to uh, reduce a little bit more um, either way works I think it will work out all the same overall still making a heavy profit off of all this and yeah it's just essentially trying to figure out stronger locomotive or get a uh, shorten the trains or start the next one. I, it's really hard to decide. Bright side is we are making a lot of money. This double track here has already made it faster for the food and the passenger to run back and forth. Um, instead of making it like one side of the food and one side of the passenger, I went ahead and just double tracked it all with the switching back and forth, the right side being them going um, towards Simi and the left side being what's coming towards Reno. And I, instead of just leaving it all without signals, I went ahead and put a signal here on each side of the crossing so that the other, if there's another train up here, this train can just keep going straight into the section, into the block section. One thing I did notice is, with this train being as long as it is, and being as full as it is here, it doesn't even get close to its full speed until about here. That's a long time to get up to speed. And especially if you end up having to stop there because the other train is in your way. I'm hoping this train gets in and out, 
very fast. Because I'd rather not have this one just picking up speed and getting here when this thing comes through. It'd be easier if we had this entire line double or even triple track, but, you know, one problem at a time. We're, we're gonna get there. <laughs> We're gonna get there. Just takes time. So just gonna let them catch up. Um, I I I I I am really excited. Cause I feel like we're 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 getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere really fast. All it takes was realizing our time was running real fast for some reason. Um, <laughs> it's already June. Are we gonna have a situation where the train makes it through? Maybe. It might. Because right now this train is just made to 22 miles per hour. This one is heading through at full speed. We're gonna start sliding down soon. Yep, right there. Boom. It's gonna have to start slowing down. That timing is perfect, though, because, um, weird note, that's exactly the same time the trains been the last time I watched them. Because I watched them before this, and those trains have been at the same spot at the same time. Downside it means both trains will technically be arriving at their stops at the same time, too. Good for profitability. Downside is, um, I'd like it if they were kind of doing bit off center not so even all the time I might have to change that because gosh that car is glowing um <laughs> That, that car is glowing. I might have to replace that later. Um, fudge. Okay. I didn't make enough. So instead, we're going to pay off another 5000 So that took off another portion of our loans. We're already down to uh, 550 So, you know didn't get the locomotive that I wanted, but we paid down some more, so that's always good. <sighs> See, it doesn't look bad like that now. Actually, it kind of does. It still kind of does. <laughs> Is there any way to fix that? Uh... This is probably also why they keep doing this, is because they keep meeting here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that project of double tracking this area. There we go. Going to have a nice little switch tower there. Right now, it's kind of going to be getting the green light all the way through because I don't have a signal anymore over there. So... This train's now approved all the way back to its stop. All right, and with that, we have officially fully double tracked this all the way. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm probably gonna have to like build this up later. But right now, that's nice. That that works can go through and I can actually start work on my mother my main other project which is I want to get a second train on this line delivering grain because I think the more grain I deliver here the bigger the trains are going to be that I can deliver right now we're already doing 49 food each time and even with the new double tracking we're probably going to have them meet at the same spot at the same time again 
until th this next time is going to be when the time they finally are going to be desynced because no longer will this train uh, have to wait for this train to make its run all the way down there. Now they'll be able to pass each other on the way back and forth. In fact, right now, they're actually going to be able to pass each other around by this. Eh, he's still to slow down, but not bad. Yeah, I think that's the start of us being able to shoot at a second priority's train. I think, I think, I really think that's what's going to happen now, guys. And then our bright yellow box car train. <laughs> Uh, I want to add some color, but I think I think that might have been too much, guys. <laughs> we need the money. So even though I just repaid, I'm gonna borrow again just so we can get a new locomotive on here. I we just need a new locomotive. Um, so we're gonna replace the uh 440 with the Baldwin class. We're going to make it red like the last one here. Alright, now comes the big test. And that the test has already been succeeded. It normally would have taken all the way down here to get back up to 23. Now we're already at 27. 8. 29. Ah, oh, we broke that. 29. Max speed of 31 miles per hour. Alright, gonna let this run, gonna see how it goes, and I'll let you guys know how it went. So, see you in a few. Alright guys, so in that final shot there you may have noticed something interesting. That old other locomotive that I just put in the shed is now being sent back out. I have been able to afford two cars, so I decided to send it out to go and try and fill up the line a little bit more. 
Also, thanks, I realized in that shot, my rail yard back here at Simi is not level. So when I have money, I want to rebuild this and make this all level. So that when trains come out of there, they're not going up or down a hill. It's all just on a flat area. Also, would allow my uh, static object trains there to look a little bit better. <laughs> and maybe I can redo that yard to make it look a little bit... Uh, look a little more artsy and better because it looks cool from here but it needs it, it can be so much better um, so yeah this is official we started our second freight train on this line as you can see the other train uh, the locomotive has been pulling the larger amount of cars faster and not just that it's been able to essentially keep up with demand to a degree um, the question now is, will the freight train, the, sorry, the food train be able to keep up with the amount of grain that it's getting fed? And there we are, our first, second train of this line is now passing. They're passing now. There you go, 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 go. So much. This Y is getting so busy, actually. Things are coming and going and moving. And... Now we just need a little bit of money. And what I want to do is I want to extend this. I want to see if I extend this track up to here. I can start getting situations where these two are essentially bypassing while on the move. That way they're not just sitting still waiting. So first things first. Um, we need a, another collar and a collar that's not gonna Is that another one of those? So went ahead, got it into the boxcar, and went ahead and changed out that yellow one for some blue ones. They look much better. I don't know why yellow looks so bad. I'm having a thought about a potentiality to See about speeding things up some more. Double tracking the last stretch. The issue is it's still going to be that's too much money right now. So we're going to have to hold off on that. But we're almost there, guys. We've almost double tracked the entire freight line. I'm hoping that one thing is... I hope one thing for sure. One thing I really want from this... Uh, dual trains is to be able to pay off those freaking loans so much faster because I'm sorry 6 million in debt is just hurting our bottom end we are literally paying $60,000 per year and that's just no that's, that's not okay there's four that should start literally paying for a car each time it comes in So, I've realized that we had already filled up and we had overloaded the 15th Street uh, Street Station. So, I actually had to switch sides of where it was so we had more room for when the freight train arrives to load it up with more goods so that the trucks don't run out of stuff. Uh, because right now what's been happening is essentially we were overloading it so it wasn't getting more. So even though the train was bringing more, it wasn't getting more. So now we've expanded it. We've added it to the other side so that it can essentially keep getting expanded without causing issue. And yeah, um, that does mean that I get rid of, got rid of the other side here. I'm very curious to see how this goes because I feel like a lot of things are just changing now.
So since we have uh, fixed the truck stop over here, we actually have food left over before the other train has arrived. Then again, that might also be because of how much food the train is now bringing into this area. So that might change going forward. It's hard to tell. But also, right now, all the food is just essentially funding all the retail locations. Where everything over here, the industrial section, requires this brick, the construction material. We don't have any of that here. For construction material, you have to get that over there. So we really need to start looking into that bridge, because that bridge would start helping us expand into a lot more markets. All these episodes so far have been leading up to a bridge. <laughs> because, you know, we have problems and we just got to build a bridge and get over them. <laughs> so we had a, our freight train arrive and it had a pink boost in uh, productivity. So I went ahead and two more cars to this train. We're now up to a grand total of, I think, 14 cars on this. That was 90, th that pretty much was a million. That train arrived and made about a million dollars. That is insane. And we've already overloaded this station. So, I went ahead and spent some money, got us another boxcar on our food goods train here, and guys, that means this train can now hold 70 food per trip, which wouldn't mean much if it wasn't for the fact that we're already at 73. <laughs> With the two freight trains, we have skyrocketed the production and delivery, the, the supply and demand is rocketing through the roof which also means our profits have which means while i've been kind of working on this we're already down to five thousand in loans that means we have paid back uh, about two million since the episode started that's insane i'm probably gonna end up paying another million before we finish which means we'll be down to 4 million at loans, which is about where we were when we started. Which is amazing. Which means I can actually start on those projects that I keep saying I'm going to start on. One of the things I definitely decided while we were kind of... The game was kind of balancing out the two new trains and everything. Um... I am slowly going to upgrade the 440s, these these longer trains, into um, I think the Baldwin class. I want to change them into these, the 280s I think is what they are. And essentially over time I'm going to move uh, our trains, the 440s here are going to be moved over here into the passenger line. And these old locomotives are going to be finally retired and most likely scrapped. Um, we're essentially going to be having our railroad go through the middle of the town. And it's going to cost a lot, I think, to destroy these buildings soon. Um, I'm going to definitely double track it before uh, we start building towards the bridge too much. Which is going to be a lot of money, but at the same time, you know, that type of project has to happen sometime or another. So it took a little bit of finagling, but we went ahead and we redid the last of this line. So now it's all double tracked all the way from here to the Y. 
I did kind of have a bit of a gap here. It's about the size of one train, so that should work out well. And we still have money left over to work on other projects. Um, there's a there's a there's more double tracking projects that I kind of wanted to work on that I've been putting off for forever. <laughs> uh, this is one of them. The passenger double tracking project. So that greatly enlarges the area for bypassing, as well as allows this to have more trains go by in the future. So, I'm trying something. We have some businesses over here that still are not really receiving as much of the goods as they should. So what I'm trying to do is I moved the truck stop for where goods get delivered over here. And my hope is that it will allow the uh, food when it's being delivered to be delivered better over here. That's the hope. That is seriously what I'm hoping will happen. We will see. Um, there's no guarantee of that working, but hey, it was at least a try. All right, so I went ahead and I uh, replaced the locomotive. Gave this one a lovely brown color, so the goods trains, the, the food trains, will have a brown color. I've already decided that the... Uh, grain trains will have that red color, and the passenger trains are going to have these, this blue color. Now, the first one to get the change, I think, is going to be this one, because this is the original. Um, so as soon as it arrives, we'll, we'll see about swapping out its locomotive. We're going to name it. So this will be called the 720 passenger, I think... I need to double check this actually. 1884, but I don't say when. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do the month and the year I think they were purchased in. I think this was purchased in July. I think this was purchased in October. Can't be sure, but that's what I think. So I'm going to take that money that I have. And instead of letting it just sit there, I'm actually going to use it to do this which is expensive but it helps us get that second line done uh, sadly uh, this entire area is gonna have to go yeah that that's why I wanted this area to not have buildings in it but uh the game decided it needed to have buildings in it. Oh, it's still so expensive. So, the optics of this are not looking good. Um, we may have hit a, another snag. Um, still delivering, but we're not shipping anymore. And that's causing another bottleneck because this place is not generating as fast as it used to. So we have trains bringing in a bunch of goods. And it's not able to store it all. So I have no clue what's going to start happening. Because it's not generating the goods fast enough for the supply train because it's not. It doesn't think that it's supplying that much. My best bet is quite literally to connect up the Warcaster. <sighs> of course, nothing works the way I hoped it would. Good news is, the 720 was able to arrive here, so...
Ooh, new commercial building. So, good news is, all those changes have allowed for new businesses to open up, which might allow for us to push forward with more goods being delivered here. So with the influx of money from all the different freight routes, even though it doesn't look like it right now, um, I kind of, as you may have noticed, built up that way, and now I have built the bridge. A million dollar bridge, but it's been built. Now I just need to connect it up and connect over to the next town, which is going to be Worcester. This place right here. Now, I've still been kind of trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I don't know where I'm going to put the station. I don't know how I'm going to design the station, because essentially this needs to be the location of a large uh, passenger terminus. I'm trying to figure out a way to have like the freight move off into its own thing, or even have like a freight station here. Another passenger car costs us 700000 So, that's going to be expensive. Um, if our factory here was delivering the amounts that it's supposed to be on time, we wouldn't have much of an issue. But the issue that I'm having right now is we've got all this here and it's not making enough food fast enough. The best I can think literally to keep, to, to speed this up and to get us back where we need to be is to connect us up to another town and have another train worth of food start being delivered there. Which would also mean connecting over here to Warcaster, because Warcaster accepts food and fuel. Which is going to be our next big thing, I think, is trying to figure out how to get fuel. We need to really get on building this line. So... Because right now I feel like this track is dipping down too... Yeah, it was dipping down way too much there. So we'll do that. How about that? We'll put the station way out here on the corner. I should look into that. Can I make... Can we get passenger overpasses? Because I would like a passenger overpass. Not bad. A nice, a nice stop. A nice station. I wish I could have uh, had this match up with the rest of the look. But the fact that this does really is nice. That's a hard decision because essentially... We have a road here that is just not wanting to play nice. Okay. So I think the best bet would be actually to build a line from the station here over that way. Okay, we get the bridge still, and it actually goes over both uh, roads. And there we are, the line between Worcester and uh, Reno is actually finished. I was kind of just expecting this episode to be where we would build to it, but after things accelerated so much, I guess, um, yeah, we're, we finished that goal because everything now really relies on us building up this line over here to be what it needs to be. To expand the passenger, to expand the freight, to kind of expand everything. So, hey, we're ahead of schedule. I'm okay with that. That is not something I usually get to do. And now to kind of help keep things a bit on the level playing field, I'm going to design a passing switch over here. We are going to have a lot of trains coming and going through this area. And we need to have a switch that is able to withstand 
long freight trains and small passenger trains. The only thing I think of the health is extend more, just because we're gonna have four trains, uh, three trains using this track. I want to add another switch here. We're gonna already double track this a tiny bit. Just gonna double track this downhill portion just so that you know we can get trains across here very fast because that's a large portion of track to not have another switch. So. Pretty much everything going forward is finishing up this dual track, adding the passenger train to there, and setting it up for our food delivery to start going there. To start having a food delivery train to expand food beyond just this town. I forgot. In all this excitement, I forgot that this track wasn't actually fully connected up yet. There we are. And now we have a full double tracked passenger section through here. And the freight has now been moved off into its own new line here. Boom. And. Our little passenger train is already heading up the line. So let's go ahead and watch it, and we'll jump back in after it's finished its first run. All right, so the first train of rider has already left. Uh, no money was made off that entire run, but that's also because it wasn't expected to. Uh, honestly, that trip was pretty much the first time. Nothing here was set up for that. And it looks like the other train has bypassed the first switch, so we will be seeing them wait here. The first wait in a long time. The fun note is that this is also showing the uh, newer locomotive, the General, with the older locomotive here. And it's kind of nice seeing the contrast of how locomotives have changed from when we first built the railroad to now. I mean, on one side, that guy gets a nice little uh, covered location. That guy... He's out in the sun all day, you know, he, he, he's, he's gonna get a lot more of a tan, I think, from this job. So there we are, we have our two food train tracks. We have the switch leading up here. I was just saying that line into motion. Which, first thing to do would probably be a smart thing, uh, connecting this track into the main line. Gotta build it up a bit.
All right, now we're just going to add a waypoint here. And a waypoint there. All right, now because we are all the way over here in Warcaster, far, 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 far away from any sort of uh, road connection of the other area, we need to build our own uh, uh, road depot. There we are. That's the word I'm looking for, road depot. There we go. And now just put down a freight stop. Essentially an area where goods can be delivered. Where can we put food? Where, where's our retail section of the town? The farm is not supplying enough now. It's actually happened. This train will probably be loaded fully, but the next one will not. So, I have multiple levels of things going on right now, of, uh, <laughs> shortages coming, and now it's like trying to figure out how we're going to deal with all those shortages, how we're going to deal with everything suddenly catching up. Normally I don't talk over these guys, but uh, welcome to the Grand Parade. So because we're running so low on grain, I made my first truck line to kind of deliver grain and kind of uh, see if we can boost the amount of grain going to that location. I normally would put a rail line there, but the issue is this farm is kind of in its a tight area, so it's not able to be done that. So we're just going to try and supply it with a large amount of horses and carriages and essentially uh, later on trucks. Hopefully I can keep like this up. Uh, I think it's five grain per horse and carriage. So that is at least, I think, a hundred right there because that was ten horses and carriages. So fingers crossed, hopefully it works. Um, let's jump back into the game. And as you can see, here they come, that lovely parade of horses and carriages crossing over the rail networks, uh, lined to the yard, and heading for, well, it's pickup, which is right here. Um, nothing there yet. I, I don't know how this is going to work. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. It should, but that's a good question. <laughs> oh, 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 it's happening. It's happening. It's finally creating enough to deliver. Because I've told it this line essentially, do not leave until you're full. So when this is full, it will go deliver at least uh, five, I believe. Yeah, five uh, grain. So not going to be enough for the train that's expecting like a hundred of grain. But still. Alright, and there we are. We have our first full load of grain leaving from this truck area. Or, well, horse and carriage at this point. But still, like... It took us a little bit of time. But the factory, the food processing factory over here, is already reporting that it's going to be arriving. 
They, they've already reported that it's coming. We need to get the other. I think we really need to get that other locomotive pushed onto the passenger service so we can get the passenger service speeded up a bit and get rid of that other uh, old Pullman and get replaced with a cloister car. Also, I'm looking heavily into investing in this town and replacing the uh, the horse and carriages with trams. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. 12000 for uh, a horse and carriage. That's not bad. It only adds five onto the amount of what was here, but still, that's that's more than nothing. How are the other horses and carriages? We already have another one on the way. Any more? And a second one. So we're up to three. There's four. It looks like uh, production might be speeding up a bit. Nice. So I can absolutely build that when I have the money again. That's just what I was hoping for. Because what we'll just do is we'll just have this track cross right across here. Yep. And that will double track essentially all the way from Reno to the food factory. Not the food factory, the uh, grain uh, depot. So, with a little bit of work, we have our first trolley service, the Worcester Trolley Line. It's essentially going to try and help people get around the little town here, and essentially take them to the train station. The entire goal is to A, take people from the train station into town, Plus people's workplaces and retail, and then take them back, giving us a nice little loop. Going forward, I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy uh, the Baldwin, because essentially we're going to start swapping out. No, let's just do that. Let's just upgrade one of these trains with the Baldwin, and then we'll replace the other one with uh, this one. I don't know if I have enough for this. I do not have enough for this train. When I we'll, we'll replace the uh, Baldwin with the Mogul, and then we'll start taking the Baldwin and put it onto uh, the other goods line. Oh, nice! Because it was technically going to the shed, I was able to change it on the fly. That is cool. That's what I was wondering about. Because technically, it registers if it's going to the shed. It's part of the shed even if it's not there yet. So essentially, I was able to change this over into its new train format, and now it just goes straight to semi, pick up passengers, and head back the other way. Where's our other train? Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, did a bit of a jump there. Sorry about that. No scenic shots this time. Just kind of wanted to sit here a bit at uh, Worcester and discuss everything that's happened. Um, simply put, paid down a whole bunch of our loans. Uh, we built the line all the way to Worcester. I did not expect to do that in an episode. Uh, we expanded the freight service with the food delivery. So much so that we had to build a Worcester because we need to now have another train delivering food elsewhere. We've built a truck line 
delivering food from Simi to the hub. We've built a tram line in Warcaster to get people around the town, and that has become extremely popular. Our passenger line in Warcaster is already up to 37 people per train. And overall, we've just had a very successful episode. This is, A lot has happened, and it really just makes me think that going forward, more is going to keep happening per episode, and it's going to get really hard to kind of break down what's next. Mostly, what we're looking at for the next in our adventures here is this passenger train is going to get another carriage. Uh, we're going to start changing out our locomotives for the longer trains and the more heavy ones with moguls. And the old Baldwins are going to get pushed onto new lines and then slowly pushed down into the passenger service. And yeah, passenger service has pretty much become my retirement. And that's another thing. We also retired these locomotives. I think it was the Virginia. Yeah, the Virginia locomotive. We retired. They're, they're officially no longer on the line. So yeah, so much has happened. So much in just one episode. And we have so much more to come up. Uh, next time, yeah, we'll see how much gets done that episode. All right, guys, this has been Silver. Thank you for watching Gaming the Grove, and thank you for watching this series. This has been an amazingly fun series, and it, I feel like things went from being really dire, like two episodes ago, to like, we are booming. Things are happening. It is only 1888, and things are now just exploding. I, 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 I'm very excited to start seeing where we are going to go next. All right, guys. Till next time. Adios. Sayonara. Goodbye. Bon voyage. What, what's all the goodbye ways to say?